There are times when it seems like all of us have a split personality, right? Not in a clinical sense, but we all have different aspects of ourselves that come out in different environments. There's the professional you, there's the personal you, the family you, there's the you around your friends, and there's you online and so forth, all of which are a little bit different. They're all you, but they're all a little bit different. And this is totally natural, though. This is, this is how the human personality is built. We're not built to be one person at all times, the exact same person at all times, that we have different elements of our personality that comes out at different times. So this is really what we refer to as presenting the self, right? How we present ourself. We have our self-concept, our self-esteem, those types of things. So how do we share that with the world um, in different contexts? And really we find that there are really two selves. We have two selves. We have, first of all, our perceived self. This is how we see ourselves. This is how if we were again, to make a list of things that we would identify as our self-concept, and the things that we make up uh, or make ourselves up, this is, the, this is the you that you know. This is the you that you see that maybe not everybody else sees every part of this. Maybe there's some parts that nobody sees. You know, if we think about the Johari window, if we, if we learn about the Johari window, there may be some of that that's the, the, the part of the perceived self, the private self that nobody else sees, right? That's hidden away. But, uh, but either way, this is how you see yourself. Um, and this is who, in your mind, you know you are who you are in the truest sense. That's how, that's that's who the per perceived self is. Is is how you see yourself um, fully and truly. Okay. But we also have the other side of us, which is the presenting self. This is the side that we let out into the world, that we let other people see, and that we almost kind of put on a show at times. Not 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 in a, not in a fake way, but uh, but that we we package ourselves in a certain way, right? When, when I go into work as Professor Rocky, I am dressed a certain way. I'm not wearing my, you know, as far as you know, I'm not wearing my ACDC t-shirt and my gym shorts um, when I'm teaching class and that kind of thing. I'm, I'm dressed in a certain way that would be more appropriate for somebody uh, in that position. So I have my presenting self now around the house. I'm definitely wearing an ACDC t-shirt and gym shorts, right? Much to the dismay of my fashion forward daughter who thinks I should be wearing something better, right? But, uh, but that's what I'm comfortable in. So that's what I wear around the house. And so that's my home self, so to speak, right? That's, but I have my work self, my home self, I have my friends. And so, and we call this, um, building face. Right. This this image that we put out for the world is called face. Right. And we work to create this face and we work to create this image. And, and the work that goes into that is just called face work. Then face work is what we do to create that image, to cultivate that image the, by by wearing a certain type of clothes, by speaking a certain way. I'll tell you, my family also gets kicked out of watching me teach or hear me speak at different places because they say my voice changes. So the voice you're hearing here is probably not the voice that my family hears most of the time at home. They say when they hear me doing these things and when they hear me teaching that my voice is different, that I have my professor voice on or my almost my radio voice, right? That's what they kind of call it. But uh, that I have a different voice when I do those things. So that's part of my face work. I change my voice. I change my clothes. I, I change all these things to build this image. Now, that's part of who I am. This is my voice, and this is my area of expertise. This is my profession. So when I do that, it's not that it's fake. It's just that part of myself, what I need to, to build in order to be successful in that part of my world. And the things that I need to do at home are different than that, though, right? At home, they don't need my professor voice. They don't need my uh, expertise in the academic area of communication. They don't need any of that. They need me to you know, mow the lawn and they need me to drive them somewhere or do, you know, these things like that. So there's a different kind of face work that goes on at home. And there's a different kind of face work that goes on with my friends and things. So, and it's all part of us though. It's all part of us. It's not, I'm not talking about being fake or being false. It's all part of us. So we build this presenting self by constructing face through doing face work. So there are really two, two sides of us. We have these two selves, the perceived self and the presenting self. We, we also then engage then when we, when we're working in, in the presenting self in impression management. Um, and that's really what we're talking about when we're building face, when we're creating that face. And part of impression management is that we strive to create multiple identities. It doesn't even just happen by accident. It's something that we work at. We work at creating these multiple identities. And uh, so that's um, important to keep that in mind, that we have these different selves. Uh, it's never more clear than when those worlds collide, right? So when my family's around when I'm teaching, those worlds collide, and it's really weird for me. So I, I, I kind of am torn between 
family me and professor me, right? So it's uh, it's it's really kind of strange, and and you've probably experienced that as well. That, that kind of tension that exists when your worlds are crossing over because we create these multiple identities, and and when they we don't know which one to choose from when when we're involved in in kind of that crossover type event, right? Impression management is also collaborative, right? It's hard to be funny if your friend doesn't think you're funny. If you're telling jokes, you think you're the funny guy. You think you're creating this face and this image and this impression as the, the funny person in the group, right? As the person who's got the best sense of humor, but nobody's laughing. It's really hard to sell that, isn't it? And really hard to maintain that face if nobody's. So you depend on others to, to kind of feed into that, to buy into that impression and to, to help you build that face and, and help you with that face work because impression management is largely collaborative um, with those around you. And impression management can be deliberate or it can be subconscious. Sometimes we do it on purpose. Sometimes uh, we don't do it on purpose. Sometimes we're really intentional about building that uh, that face and, and working on our impression management. Other times we're not. Um, social media, for example, is one place where we are very deliberate about it. Right? Most people are very um, specific about what kinds of pictures they put up. Right? They cultivate this image through social media, and that's that's very deliberate impression management. Other times it just kind of happens. You're being who you are. It just kind of happens naturally and it's subconscious. We may not even think about it, but we're still building that face. We're still, you know, working toward that impression that we want to build. We just may not even be fully conscious of it at the time. So impression management can be deliberate or sometimes it can be subconscious and we do it without even really realizing it. Whatever the case, impression management and, and the presenting self are very important. There's nothing wrong with with uh, with the presenting self, it, again, it's not fake, it's not false, it's not lying, it's not deception. Those are different things. You can do all those things, of course, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about presenting the real you, but just different parts of the real you in different contexts, right? And that's a perfectly natural thing um, for people to do. If you have questions about the presenting self or perceived self or anything related to that impression management, please feel free to contact me. Not necessarily about how to make a good impression, but about the qualities of impression management itself from a communicative aspect. You can email me. I'd be happy to chat with you about that via email. In the meantime, I hope that you will give consideration to your presenting self and, and think about, you know, what kind of image are you putting together? What kind of impression are you giving off um, for people? And is it the appropriate one? Is, and is it truly you? So those are all important questions to be asking yourself because we all have, again, those two selves, the perceived self and the presenting self. And we want to be as conscious as we can about how we manage uh, each of those things.